What makes for a successful Stirling engine powered boat? Well the engine is important but another big factor is the boat itself. This boat was built by Ian McAlpine and has a kitchen rudder at the rear but the point I would like to make is that the transom, the back end of the boat, um, is not sunk down into the water. The transom act, can act like a plank being dragged at right angles to the movement of the boat being dragged through the water and causing a lot of friction. If the back end of the boat rises is higher up and out of the water then the water line is a bit like a canoe and is a very nice curve and the water can flow around it very nicely. This reduces the friction a lot. So thank you Ian, it's a nice hull. The engine was built by Julian Wood. He can be seen seated at the front of the boat. It is a beater engine and it has the heater tubes on the top. This allows good heating because the air is passed through those heater tubes and there is a large surface area to uh, get heated. But the point I'd like to raise is that the engine is pressurised. Julian can be seen with a pump pumping the pressure, maintaining the pressure level. And of course with a Stirling engine the more gas molecules, air molecules there are inside it getting hot and pushing that piston, the more power there is. The third factor is the matching of the propeller to the engine. With Stirling engines it is not a case of faster means more power because it takes time for heat to get through into the gas each revolution, each stroke of the engine. And the faster this is, the less time there is, and the less power there is. So there is a peak point where the engine is producing the most power. Once this point is known, then we need to match the engine to the propeller, such that the propeller loads the engine to that precise peak revolution power. To do this, we're using chain and sprocket. So by getting the gearing right between the engine shaft and the prop shaft, we can maximise the speed. Thank you.